Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tees video. And there is just something about Balanced Druid that always draws me back to it. I think it is the ability to make plays and to carry the game, to set up your team, to play defensive. It's really the whole package. If you want a real experience, you need to be trying a Balanced Druid out in PvP because I really don't think you'll be let down by it with how high its skill ceiling is and your ability to progress and your decision making that's required while you play through it it is super super fun uh, i've been enjoying trying to make it work right now in a world of outlaw rogues and rep paladins so in today's video i'm going to be covering some of those plays that you can be making with the balance druid one of those plays is cross crowd control so communicating with your team to stun an enemy dps while crowd controlling the healer this is kind of a standard play in wow pvp that you need to learn how to master and in this instance we've stunned the demon hunter while solar beaming the pally this prevents the demon hunter from reverse magicking our root solar beam and then allows us to just truck a bunch of damage into the demon hunter forcing the other team to respond or to kind of check out of the game so in that initial attack we got blur from the demon hunter then we swapped to the paladin the healer after getting their defensive cooldown and poked a little bit more cooldowns from the paladin now that our assault is over we need to focus on defensive plays so we're utilizing cyclone cycloning enemy attackers as they use their medallions the De death knight here using their trinket on imprison during their grippy hand so we can cyclone immediately to punish that and then cycloning the other target when it's low health and off diminishing return netting us two medallions from the opposing team at this time a lot of balanced druids you might feel inclined to kind of just sit in bear form and tank i do not recommend that anymore in balanced druid casting cyclone is going to be key to your ability to survive and outplay your opponents during this time uh, we get another cyclone onto the demon hunter we can then use roots onto the demon hunter and the death knight we want to use our second mass entanglement on dps attackers and and then use the next one to pair up with our solar beam this gets us distance away from the attackers to incap the paladin and to cyclone the paladin and after getting the cyclone of the paladin the enemies overlap their nether walk immunity cooldown as well as sacrifice from the paladin but with all of these cyclone plays repositioning and usages of our utility we've pretty much worked through almost every defensive cooldown that is in the spell book of our opponents whenever there's a defensive active on the dps member good idea to swap to the healer which is what we're doing right now going after the paladin baiting them to use more cooldowns than they would need we can then use typhoon wild charge paired together to get a lot of distance away from the demon hunter and the death knight then once we've got distance to avoid the interrupts we can then use our cyclones on the metamorphosis of the demon hunter to stop them from getting that added extra damage and then free cast wraths to get into eclipse because there's no more interrupts on top of us when we're in eclipse this is when we want to be using our kindred empowerment this is when we want to be using our fury of a loon and dumping our star surges but the enemy has used a defensive cooldown here with blur so i'm holding my damage i'm going to root the attackers uh, and then reposition away because i use solar beam to interrupt a paladin cast and as i'm repositioning away i go into bear form anticipating myself to get stunned whenever you think you're about to get stunned you want to make sure you're in bear form we also utilize imprison on the death knight during their dark transformation to prevent their damage chaining it into a stun lock if this stun was one second faster i would have got the clone on the paladin we may have actually been able to win the game in this instance so again with perfect coordination that's why i say it's such a high skill ceiling you're going to be able to execute an end games way faster this was a moment where this game could be already over but if it was then so would the video so maybe it's a good thing and all, all things happen for for a reason regardless we can then sneak into a cyclone onto the paladin dump all of our star surges make sure that we're in eclipse before we're dumping all of our star surges making sure that the healer is somewhat crowd controlled or that we have like an overwhelming amount of damage and we know the enemy has no defensives and then cycloning targets when they get defensives here is the blessing of protection onto the demon hunter so we'll cyclone them at low health denying that bonus defense as well as preventing the paladin from immediately recovering then while the enemies are immune we'll use in cap roar and reposition with wild charge getting into bear form for the stun and if you're able to get into bear form for every Every single stun you're going to be able to carry games and survive very easily we can then use frenzied regeneration reposition knock our opponents away after their stun lock to get distance and this distance is going to enable us to either cyclone cast wraths to get into eclipse and generate astral power for our next burst window so it's very important to be utilizing your mobility basically on cooldown which can be really tough because it is very low cooldown but now we can see that blur is active on the demon hunter we don't really want to be dumping our damage into blur so i'm just preemptively activating my eclipse getting 
getting ready for the blur to fall, getting ready to reposition to the Paladin to use my solar beam as I see it coming off cooldown soon. So if I can get full astral power, be an eclipse right as that solar beam is available, I'll be able to CC the Paladin and then execute on the kill for the Demon Hunter. Paladin realizes this is what I want to do and uses Aura Mastery. You can see them in the corner here at the pillar. I do not want to be solar beaming into that, so I tell my Demon Hunter to CC the Paladin, and then I aim to try and chain out of the Imprison here. I'm faking interrupts, waiting for Imprison, timing my Cyclone right as it ends, and landing it right in between, and then it's time to dump all of our damage. We're not in Eclipse here, but this is like a game-winning moment, so we just need to dump our Star Surges anyways. Paladin knows it's a game-winning moment, denies our kill by using Divine Shield, which immunes him from our Cyclone. But we still have our solar beam. We could still set up on that later. Here we're going into bear form, dropping frenzied regeneration, as it is the grippy hands of the de the death knight, as well as dark transformation. We're dropping our root beam on the paladin. Unfortunately, no stun on the demon hunter means that they were able to get over there to reverse it. This could have also been the end of the game, but it can be difficult when you're under pressure during the grippy hands. But coordination is key. This game now has two points where it could have ended, and that's why I'm saying going back and reviewing your gameplay can be really good and important for improving and noticing those moments and then cleaning them up into the future. Now we're repositioning away, trying to get distance so we can utilize Cyclone and then get some breathing room to cast spells, which is gonna get us into Eclipse later on, which will be important to burst. Now the enemies have used their trinkets and, our, and their stuns, so we're gonna go as bear form, we're gonna trinket, and we're gonna try and tank them out using in cap when AMS is up because then the magic damage is not gonna break it likely and just trying to annoy them as much as possible and use our frenzied regeneration when our shaman here is caught in crowd control. Demon Hunter ally is caught in crowd control, so we're kind of all alone here. We'll tank and bear for a moment, keep Iron Fur up, toss out a couple of globals and bear before repositioning and trying to escape with Wild Charge, going into travel form to get some extra distance, and then using Typhoon to bounce them away. Now we've got an instant Starfire, so we can line this up to get ourselves into Solar Eclipse. Proccing Solar Eclipse, the Demon Hunter uses a defensive, so we're going to charge to the Paladin with our High Mountain Racial and go for a Cyclone. I've been curious to try some other Racials as well with uh, Balanced Druid. I particularly want to try Kul'Tiran, but I do enjoy a High Mountain Torrent at the moment just because of being able to make a play like this, escaping and setting up crowd control. Then we're going to reposition. We're waiting for the enemy's defense to fall. As we can see, Blur was active there, so we're going to just use Wild Charge to get distance, bait the Demon Hunter into a bad position. I'm trying to drag him into the starting room because he has no trinket. So if in five seconds we can stun the Demon Hunter behind the pillar, they'll likely die. This also forces the Demon Hunter to get off of me rather than finishing me off. So we can go into Bear Form, Frenzied Regeneration continue to reposition we have our incarnation available kindred spirits is coming up in five seconds this is where we really want to line all these cooldowns together and the enemy uses sacrifice prior to our massive burst damage so now we just want to kind of stall for a second use cyclone try and stop some damage get ready for that big window because this defense is now not going to be there to save the demon hunter in the future so using the stun here we could have probably held it um, for my solar beam uh, rather than using the stun here during the sacrifice because it's not likely we would be able to kill the target. I'm tanking the enemy attackers in Earthen Wall Totem, waiting to set up for the solar beam, and this is why saving the stun there would have been important. But we get a hex onto the paladin. We can activate Lunar Eclipse. We can then activate Incarnation. This will get us two Fury of Aloons, and then we can use our odd use Fury of Aloon, and we can dump our Kindred Spirits to do massive damage. But during the hex, I didn't pop any of those cooldowns because I was, thought the paladin would trinket if I did, and so we baited Darkness from the Demon hunter we get into bear form for the stun we're going to use bark skin because our shaman is crowd controlled we're going to be able to tank them out here uh, and then as soon as we can get the solar beam onto the paladin uh, with a stun onto the demon hunter we can probably end the game we actually end up swapping to the paladin in this moment which can be good uh, we get in line of sight of them the down to half and then i decide to solar beam i feel like i was trying to solar beam their trinket there honestly waiting and then solar beaming the paladin and swapping would have been a lot better of a play in this instance i then cyclone the paladin set up for damage on the demon hunter you can see that i'm not kind of like spamming damage out and it's because against classes like this demon hunter and, De and death knight you need to blast them in specific windows you don't want to do sustained damage because they're just going to heal through sustained damage too easily you really need to save your star surges and time them anti-magic zone and blur on the demon hunter so we swap to the paladin again swapping to healers when defenses are active on the dps is a really good strategy to try and employ and then get distance after your little burst window is over in this instance we're kind of getting overwhelmed 
and we're going to drop spirit link totem as we reposition through the spirit link totem and then try and get back out into the open so that we can hopefully get the paladin into a better position to either crowd control or to attack so my positioning in this game could have actually been executed better i think pulling the paladin further away from the middle pillar would have been a lot better but here now we're focusing on survival trying to get rid of the grippy hands this is the scariest moment of the game so we're going to use roots under the dps try and pull away from the dps get into bear form before the stun our demon hunter aids us here with a double stun during their cooldowns and we really need to focus on trying to get away from them we cast cyclone if we get kicked we can then wild charge away an escape to safety that's why i say don't be afraid of getting kicked as a balanced druid generally you want to be the kind of the interrupt sponge for the team and then use your your shape shifting while you're interrupted to be able to escape to safety or recover a little bit of a dicey moment here we use imprism defensively almost always defensively in this uh, specific game i wonder if we if we'd use it offensively at any point if it would have been better uh, but our shaman is still crowd controlled so we're tanking in bear using in cap roar just trying to get distance just trying to pull off a miracle save moment um, with our mobility dropping barks can as it comes off cooldown try and use mangle to get rage to get iron fur up to make us as durable as possible try and survive for one more attack uh, the paladin has no trinket likely still has bubble but we get demon hunters trinket here aggressively and they blur to try and finish us and this is one of the advantages of playing like this is to try and get your opponents to overextend get tilted uh, and try and end the game and then by trying to end the game they actually end up throwing so as this demon hunter is pushing in so aggressively they're burning through a lot of cooldowns we're able to sneak in a hex onto the paladin then get a solar beam onto the paladin we can send our empowerment try and push forward for a cyclone onto the paladin and if we're able to get this cyclone the demon hunter is probably going to be going down so i'm staying next to them but while i'm interrupted bear farm frenzied regen dropping darkness to kind of stand in an aggressive position now we're doing similarly what they were doing playing aggressive to try and end the game by standing close to the paladin might not be the best decision at this instance we need to start pulling away try and drag them into the open so we can hex them or stun them uh, and bait the demon hunter who is now the priority target there's no blur there's no nether walk we just got those two cooldowns we can activate eclipse with our distance casting solar wrath and just dump star surges at this point and now we flip the imprison to cc the paladin with the imprison under the paladin and a dispel on our stun we can finish off the demon hunter who had the least amount of cooldowns uh, and finally be able to end the game so you can see it's a mix of offense defense utility burst timing there's multiple play styles for balance druid with the way that i was playing this matchup my damage on the scoreboard is going to be significantly lower and the main reason for this is because i am just holding damage i'm just sitting with it waiting for the perfect moment because if you just fire damage into blur you're not guaranteed to kill the target if you're just shooting damage off willy-nilly this type of composition will easily heal through it so demon hunters death knights this type of deal there are other classes where it is better to just maximize your damage but this game in particular i wanted to focus on just specific windows and hitting those timings uh, and as a result we could burst down the target with a better execution we probably could have ended this game multiple times before like i said in my commentary but aside from that i hope that you enjoyed the video if you did please leave it with a thumbs up and comment down below and hit the subscribe button as i do greatly appreciate it. i'm very I'm trying very hard right now to hit 40,000 subs and i would greatly appreciate it so thank you very much and i will catch you in the next video